Welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today it is December 9th, which means it is the ninth day of our advent calendar of holiday horror movies, counting up to the big day, Christmas Day. And also on Christmas Day is going to be my 300th horror movie review. So big day all around. But for right now, I am reviewing the 2019 Amazon Prime movie, Holiday Hell. Now, Holiday Hell is an anthology horror that I think has some very good qualities to it and some not so good qualities to it. Uh, overall, I found it to be an enjoyable but ultimately forgettable watch. Now, much like the film Holiday, this has several different segments, each one centered around a different holiday. But unlike the movie Holidays, this one actually has a binding storyline that integrates itself and weaves its way in through throughout the rest of the movie. And this binding storyline is called the Never Told Casket Company. And in there we find Jeffrey Combs playing the shopkeeper as he is a shopkeeper of curios and interesting wares, stuff of the macabre, and everything has a story. And when a customer comes in uh, by the name of Amelia late at night, uh, she is desperate to find something for her sister. The shop's about to close. It's almost Christmas Eve. She is running out of time and she finally convinces Jeffrey Combs to stay open just a little while longer as she peruses to find the perfect gift. And in doing so, he takes her through some of the wares of the shop and tells the stories behind particular items that she points out. And that leads to the stories that unfold in our anthology. So in this, we have the story of Dollface, which is our Valentine segment. We have The Hand That Rocks the Dreidel, which is our Hanukkah segment. Uh, Christmas Carnage, Christmas segment. And uh, Room to Let. And I'll describe that one in a little bit. But I thought that was an interesting little twist on things. Now, one thing this movie does very well is by having the interwoven storyline, it actually manages to keep a level of intrigue going, that there's a subtle slight mystery going on. It hints at it, and it just kind of ramps that up progressively as we keep going back to it in between the storylines. And one thing that that really did is even when the individual segments themselves I found to be a bit lackluster, I was still very glued to the screen because I've been wanting to see how this unfolded. Something about Jeffrey Combs' performance in this really sold that and increased that mystery every time we went back to it. Now, in the Valentine segment of Dollface, we're presented with the situation of a bunch of teenagers want to party in a house that has a bad history to it and that history comes back to haunt them. It just kind of, it's a pretty uh, throwaway segment that I thought was... Uh, I don't know, so-so at best. That's one thing that I can say is every single segment of this one, I would say that there's not a bad one in the bunch, but there are forgettable ones. There are mediocre ones, and Dollface is one of those, and so is The Hand That Rocks the Dreidel. It's a cute concept, but it's not very original. It's one we've seen a million times before in one form or another of a child that is gifted upon the holiday season a doll. And that doll happens to uh, come alive and protect him against external elements in very horrific fashion. Uh, so nothing really going on there. Uh, Christmas Carnage. Now this one, I thought, I'm not going to say it was exceptional, but I really liked it. Uh, in this one, we have the character of Chris, who plays a milk toast, uh, paunchy, middle-aged man that basically lets life trot all over him. He is a sad sack of a uh, man that's trying to stay sober and trying to keep happy, but ultimately has a shrill shrew of a wife and a job that just keeps passing him up for promotion and ultimately just keeps going under the radar no matter how hard he tries. It's kind of a modern take on the whole uh, short, uh, stop at Willoughby. And uh, <clears throat> in this one, at a Christmas party with work, uh, he is basically uh, dressed up as Santa and he gets pushed a little bit too far and goes over the edge in very, very uh, gleeful fashion. I enjoyed watching this segment. It, it, again, it, nothing really that horribly new. Uh, definitely nothing terribly original, but I still enjoyed it. What they had was a lot of fun, and you can tell they had a lot of fun making it. So that really shone through, and in turn, I had fun watching it. And Room to Let. Now, this was an interesting one because not only did we have the binding storyline of the Never Told Casket Company, but it also had a deviation in this where 
those th- the previous three segments were the ones that Jeffrey Combs was describing the story of three individual items. And then we had a twist, a change of narrative, as he notices a particular item on his customer, and she begins to tell the story of that as he is interested in purchasing it from her. So now we get introduced to Room to Let. And as much as I enjoyed the setup and I enjoyed the cha- change of narrative, it was only okay. So this was a peculiar movie for me, honestly, because as an anthology horror, we had the segments in respective order of average, okay, pretty good, and meh. Uh, So, I mean, just kind of forgettable, forgettable, pretty good, and forgettable. Uh, So, again, nothing terrible about this, but what would really make me want to sit down and actively watch this? Well, first of all, is the Christmas segment enough of a draw to make that happen? And I would say no, but close. But the Christmas segment, along with the Never Told Casket Company binder, uh, I think is enough. It is enough to make this a worthwhile watch and one that I would say that I loosely, softly recommend. I'm not going to pound on my desk and saying it's a must watch, but I am going to say that it is enjoyable enough. It is a bit of fluff. It is a bit forgettable. You're probably not going to be uh, you know, watching it every year around the holiday times. It's going to be one that you watch, say, oh, okay, and <laughs> move on with your life. But on that note, it is entertaining and it is enjoyable. I'm going to go and throw up all the scores here. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And I think the points kind of speak for themselves as far as my opinion on this one goes. Average, mediocre, slightly okay, good to slightly better than good. (laughs) Or just, yeah, I mean, 57 out of 100 points. That's pretty much how I felt about it. Um, so I guess take that for what you will. I mean, no, it's not a glowing endorsement, but I also don't want to discourage people from watching this. If you see this on your Amazon prime and it seems like something that intrigues you when you're wondering whether or not to click that play button, you know what? I say, go for it. There's nothing in this that would make me say, turn away, stop what you're doing, find something else. But at the same time, I'm also not, like I said, going to be rattling my saber and say, you know, stop what you're doing immediately and taking on Amazon Prime. It's not that good. It's just good enough that you're, if you're already interested, go for it. So that should about do it. That's my review of 2019's Holiday Hell. I really thank you for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. And if you want to support me further, my Patreon and my merchandise storefront links are below. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.